This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on awesomesharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and move to adding reminders for our application but the first thing we need to do is to create a reminders model so I'm going to go into my core data model file. And you can see that right now we have only entities for my list. I'm going to go ahead and also add another entity and I will call it reminder. Make sure that your entity name are singular and not plural because entity name, class name, same thing. So we are going to follow the same convention over here and we're just going to call it reminder instead of reminders. Okay. Now, the question is, what do we want to store in a reminder entity? This is where we have to go and edit these attributes. Well, a reminder will have some sort of a title, like mow the lawn, clean the dishes, feed the dog, and all those kind of things. It will be of type string. And we also have to make sure that the title is actually required. So we will uncheck the optional. What are the things we need to store? Well, notes. Just like the reminder app from Apple, you will be allowed to store notes for your reminder. Notes will be string and they're optional. So leave it optional check mark because sometime you will have notes, sometime you will uh, don't have notes. Then obviously we have to check if the reminder is completed or not. So again, this will be a Boolean value. It's not really optional, but we can do something with the actual default value. And default will be no because the task is not completed or the reminder is not completed. Next up, we have reminder date so that we can send a notification. We can uh, you know, tell you that, okay, this is a reminder date, meaning this is when you will be, you know, this is when it's due. And the data type we will select will be date. Some reminders will have dates, some reminders will don't have dates. So we're just gonna make sure this is optional. That is perfectly fine. And we will have another field for reminder time. Sometimes you will not really have a date associated with the reminder but only time and in those cases we will just select the default date to be today so in this case i'm just going to select date and again this is optional so that's fine 
So these are a couple of fields like one, two, five fields that we have added, five properties, attributes we have added to the reminder. Now we need to think about what is the relationship between a list and the reminder. One list can have many reminders. So this is the relationship we're going to build under the relationship section where we will add reminders as a relationship. And we'll select reminder. Make sure that when you are selecting this relationship, choose the type not to one but to many because we're saying that the relationship between the my list and the reminder is too many. One list can have many reminders. Delete rule means when you delete the my list, what will happen to the reminders? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select cascade, which means if you delete the list, well, all the reminders in that list are also deleted. Now let's go back to the reminder. And we can create this inverse relationship. So the reminder will also know that which list it belongs to. I'm going to go ahead and add a relationship. Now you can call your relationship anything you want. I'm just going to call it list. It's going to target my list and inverts will be reminders. And this is a two one relationship. This means that if you have a reminder in your hand, you can use the list attribute list property to find out that which list this reminder belongs to. The same goes for the my list. You have my list as an entity and in the relationship, you have reminders, which means one list can have many reminders. So this is a one-to-many relationship. And looking from this side, it's many-to-one relationship. Let's go ahead and build our application, just to make sure that it is building successfully. And now you can see that we have created the reminder model with all of these different properties that we have. And we are ready to actually add a particular reminder to our application. So let's go ahead and add a very basic reminder to a particular list.